For over 20 years, the Goodwood Festival of Speed has celebrated the greats of F1. But for some of the 20th century's greatest drivers and marks, this isn't the full story. Back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, Formula One was just one of a few championships that the world's greatest drivers competed in. Allow me to explain. Let's take Goodwood's April International Meetings in the early 60s as an example. The best drivers in the world from both sides of the Atlantic took part in the Glover Trophy in the latest Formula One machines. This wasn't a World Championship event, but it served as an early season form guide for the Grand Prix. Then, in the same meeting, a driver would jump into a GT car, like this Jaguar E-Type Lightweight. A completely different beast, but just as physical to drive. But we're not done yet. As next came the highly competitive touring car race, taking on specialists such as Alan Mann or Gordon Spice. Oh, and then there might be a Formula 2 race. Back in the 60s and 70s, the Formula 1 stars used to take on the young and up-and-coming chargers in machinery like this. Unimaginable in the modern world. From the mid-50s through to the early 60s, Sterling Moss was the king of the motorsport maestros, beating all comers in many disciplines and earning some serious prize money and fame. But by the early 60s, Graham Hill was the pretender to that crown. Damon, you grew up in paddocks all around the world. Putting your reputation on the line to jump out of Formula 1 into F2 sounds like a mad thing to do now, but people like your dad were exceptionally good at it. Why do you think they did it? They were doing it because they loved it. They, I think they jumped at the chance to try, you know, showing their hand in different disciplines. For me, a very exciting period because I was driving different cars all of the time. I, I would drive a BRA and then I would drive a Formula 2 car and at the same time I'd be driving a lightweight E-Type for John Coombs. If it was a sports car, obviously a lot of kudos to have a Formula 1 driver drive your sports car. That's how they earned their money. They were jockeys. I feel like Graham Hill does not get the credit perhaps that he deserves for, you know, this is a guy who's won the Indy 500, won Le Mans, won the Monaco Grand Prix, world champion. You only have to give his results. Guys that have won those races are obviously very good, very talented and very versatile. To drive the cars he drove, he had to drive with a little bit in reserve. And I think that probably suited his mentality. I do remember my dad winning Indianapolis and there being a big party in the back garden and, and us having to put on a lot of effort to, to you know, bunting and stuff like saying welcome home. So I was aware of what my dad was doing, but in a very kind of detached way there's been nobody like him ever since, and there probably never will be in the future. With that personality and that gift and that, and that humour that he had. But Graham Hill's greatest rival was Jim Clark. I like Jim Clark. I, I was a bit of a Jim Clark fan. My dad was just my dad, so um, I don't know how he felt about that. Jimmy Clark was my hero uh, of, that, of that era. Before that, it was Sterling Moss, as all schoolboys would have been. And then it was Jimmy, I don't know why it was. I mean, I have great respect for Graham and the greatest respect for Jackie and what they did, but somehow Jimmy Clark was my sort of, my man. It, it was so smooth and so clean. And he didn't, he didn't bully a car at all. His car control is just ridiculous. I mean, it's poetry. It's like ballet watching him drive a car. If you had to pick the maestro of the 1960s, who would it be? It would have to be Jackie Stewart. He changed motor racing in a major way. I, I'd have to pick my dad, I'm sorry, you know, but uh, you know, I think that he did win in all disciplines. Jim Clark, for me, he was categorically the number one of my era. With the dawn of the jet age, the maestros were able to practice in Europe on Friday, race in America on Saturday, and come back for the Grand Prix on Sunday. I mean, I one year did, did 78 crossings of the Atlantic. Anytime you phone Jackie, he says, I'm sorry, I've just got to go to the airport. We always traveled economy because there was never a business class then. It was only first class or economy. Next time, I'll be looking at the transatlantic maestros and also driving a legend's car up the hill. <laughs>